Uh, a very good day to one and all. So, welcome to another session on the various topics in pediatric surgery. If there is one topic in pediatric surgery which is an eponym of which is uh, an indication of how broad the field of pediatric surgery is, is this particular topic. Pediatric surgery is one particular field where we, wherein we handle children with a very varied number of pathologies from head to toe. So, it includes the thorax as well. So, some of the thoracic conditions that are commonly encountered in the field of pediatric surgery are congenital cysts of the lung. So, what are, the con what are congenital cysts of the lung? So, basically they are developmental cysts. So, they are basically abnormalities in the normal development of the lung. So, this includes not only maldevelopment of the lung as such, but of the foregut itself can result in the formation of these cysts. The incidence of lung cysts is extremely variable and the terminology congenital cystic lung disease or congenital lung cysts include three major importances. One would be what is called as cystic congenital cystic adenomatoid malformation which is now commonly called as congenital pulmonary airway malformation, bronchopulmonary sequestration or BPS as it is called, congenital lobar emphysema. So, these three conditions are the, pre, three, are the three most important uh, components of congenital lung cysts. So, to know in detail about these, uh, this particular pathology involving the lung, it is very important that we have a basic understanding of the embryology of the lung. So, there are different phases in development of the lung. You have five different phases. The first phase is called the embryonic phase. The second phase is called pseudoglandular phase. Third is called canalicular phase, fourth phase is called saccular phase and the fifth and the last phase is called alveolar phase. So, the lung development starts by around the third week. That is so basically the embryonic phase starts by around the third week. So, initially it is formed as a diverticulum at the caudal end of the laryngotracheal groove so which itself is formed from the ventral aspect of the developing foregut. So, by around the fourth week, a trachea develops and primary lung buds develop. So, by the sixth week, we have lobar structures developing from the primary lung buds. So, from the seventh week onwards, we have this pseudoglandular phase coming in. So, it goes up till 16 weeks of gestation. During the pseudoglandular phase, there is airway differentiation. All the bronchial airways develop during this particular phase of lung development. The third important phase is a canalicular phase which lasts from the 16th week of gestation to up to 24 weeks of gestation. So, during this phase we have as space development. Basically, there is development of the alveolar as sacs. Along with the alveolar as sacs, you also have development of the pneumocytes. We have the type 1 pneumocytes and the type 2 pneumocytes. So, the type 2 pneumocytes begin to develop during this particular phase. Hence, theoretically, since the type 2 pneumocytes are developing during this period and the alveolar ASACs are developing during this period, gas exchange is theoretically possible during this canalicular phase. The fourth phase is the saccular phase, which lasts from, the tw from 24 weeks of gestation up till term. So, during this phase, we have remodeling of aspases. We have the developed aspases which undergo remodeling so that they become mature. We also have maturation of surfactant synthesis. So, the surfactant synthesis which begins in the canalicular phase becomes more stabilized by in the by around 24 to uh, 24 weeks until term. So, this is termed as maturation of surfactant synthesis by the type 2 pneumocytes. After term, we have another phase called the alveolar phase. So, alveolar phase extends from term to up to 8 years. So, there are two schools of thought. So, so, generally it is propounded that the alveolar phase extends up till 8 years of age. But there are few studies which say that it extends only up to 2 years. But as per commonly used textbooks, it extends up to 8 years of age. So, during this phase we have maturation, alveolar maturation and multiplication. So, it is safe to say that lung development is not complete at birth, but continues to occur right up till 8 years of age. As the airways develop, 
you also have the development of the pulmonary vascular structures. So, development of the pulmonary vascular structures, the pulmonary artery, the pulmonary arterioles, the pulmonary vein and the pulmonary venules, all this occurs in concordance or in accordance with the development of the airway. It is very important to know the terminology called acinus. So, acinus is basically the functional unit of a lung. So, it includes the alveoli, the alveolar duct and the terminal bronchiole. So, it is this segment or acinus which contributes to gaseous exchange. So, with this basic understanding on the development of the uh, regarding the development of the lung, we will discuss the various cystic diseases of the lung in detail. So, the first and one of the most commonly encountered cystic diseases of the lung is a congenital cystic adenomatoid malformation. This is a terminology which is used earlier. Now, it is called as congenital pulmonary airway malformation. So, basically here there is an adenomatoid increase in terminal bronchioles and this forms cysts. There are five important features which have to be present to be termed for a cystic disease to be termed as a congenital pulmonary airway malformation. It includes a polypoidal projection of mucosa within the cyst, increase in smooth muscle and elastic tissue, absent cartilage, absent mucus secreting cells and absence of inflammation. So, if these five features are, are fulfilled, if these five characteristics are fulfilled, then we can term that particular cystic disease of the lung as a CPAM. 